There was a panic when the storm overtook the boat that Jesus was in. The winds and the waves obeyed Jesus. And some early church history. All of this and more is coming up next on Bible Discovery TV. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Rod Hembry. I'm Janice. And this is Quick Study Television, a program that is designed to take you through the Bible chronologically, and we hope that you have joined us. If you haven't, make sure you write for your Bible guide, and we'll tell you how to do that later. But today, we're going to focus on Matthew 8, verses 14 to 34, and a focus on Mark 4 and 5. We're going to look at Matthew 8, 23 to 34. There was a panic when the storm overtook the boat. The storm was out there and they were on their way and there was a storm and the waves were coming in and well, they woke up Jesus. So what was that all about? We'll talk about it coming up in just a moment. Corey is here with Bible History and Archaeology. Corey, what's up? Today we're going to be focusing in on some early church history, specifically the early church in the city of Rome and also a founding church father. A founding church father in the early church in Rome. Very interesting, Corey. That's going to be fascinating. So stay there for that. Do you know? Yes, I'm focusing in on Mark. Do you know that Mark tells us what part of the boat Jesus was sleeping in while the storm raged? Well, what part of the boat was he sleeping in? All right, that and more coming up. Stay there. Rome played a very important part in the foundation of the church, not only because it was the capital city of the empire of Rome, but also because there were some influential visits by apostles there early on. Take a look at this. In the first century AD, the city of Rome had a flourishing Christian population. This is the group of believers to whom Paul wrote the Book of Romans. His purpose in writing was to strengthen their faith a strengthening that would become all too necessary with Emperor Nero's descent into madness. The city of Rome was originally founded in the 8th century BC on Palatine Hill, but it quickly grew to encompass six other surrounding hills. Rome went through the stages of being a monarchy with kings and royalty, a republic with elected consuls and a senate, and finally, an empire marked by the first ruling emperor, Caesar Augustus, who is also mentioned as the reigning emperor when Christ was born. Today, Rome's most popular landmark by far is the still-standing giant amphitheater, the Colosseum. But the New Testament Church of Rome lived a few decades before this was built. Instead, they would have been familiar with the Circus Maximus, a chariot racetrack that could seat 60,000 Romans. Caesar Augustus also had built many elaborate public buildings, temples, and monuments to beautify the city while adding lasting fame to his own name. The population of Rome during the first century was around a million people, including hundreds of thousands of slaves. Wealthy citizens lived in villas and estates built in ancient suburbs, while commoners lived in Rome's version of the apartment building. The New Testament Church of Rome experienced great changes under Emperor Nero's reign. After a devastating fire swept the city in AD 64, the emperor began a seek-and-destroy policy towards Christians, 
one that aimed to provide Rome with an enemy they could see. Nero publicly tortured and executed Roman Christians, including both apostles Peter and his wife and Paul. Now, when you ask a lot of Christians about early church history, that is history that happened right after the New Testament, uh, but still thousands of years ago to us today, a lot of them are dumbfounded. A lot of them don't know what to say. And that really is a shame. There is a rich early history of the church and we would be wise to pay attention to it because it will help us understand uh, a lot of the theology surrounding uh, what Jesus taught and how that was applied, not only by the apostles, but then by the disciples of the apostles. Now, later on in the program, you and I are going to do a study, conduct a study on one of those disciples of the apostles, the, the 12 apostles of Jesus. I hope you'll find it interesting. You know, uh, that is a very interesting point, Corey, and I think that's uh, important and the fact that you pitched uh, the upcoming piece a little bit later, and I'm going to stay here for that, and I encourage you to as well. Mm -hmm. But I do want to mention that the Bible site is BibleDiscoveryTV.com, and you can get a hold of us by going there and watching any one of the programs. So you can watch the programs, you can see the video, you can do anything there. So if we are not on the, uh, the, the television program that you normally watch us on and we're kicked off or whatever happens, you can always get a hold of us here, BibleDiscoveryTV.com. There are many stories about Jesus Christ in the gospel records. Most of them tell the details of the conflict around them and how Jesus conquered them. What we learn from the times when Jesus was in the boat are both fascinating and remarkable. They're littered with the truth about Jesus Christ and how he can dictate the authority of God in his presence. Storms followed his instructions, but he needed to take authority over those storms. And the world has changed since the fall of man in Genesis 3. We live in sin today. It is a word that few can understand or know about in today's world. But it is critical to understand the word of God and the word sin and the difference therein. Matthew chapter 8, verses 23 through 34. Now when he got into a boat, his disciples followed him. And suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea, so that the boat was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. Then his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. But he said to them, why are you fearful, O you of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. So the men marveled, saying, Who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? When he had come to the other side, to the country of the Gergesenes, there met him two demon-possessed men coming out of the tombs exceedingly fierce so that no one could pass that way. And suddenly they cried out, saying, What have we to do with you, Jesus, you Son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the time? Now a good way off from them there was a herd of many swine feeding. So the demons begged him, saying, If you cast us out, permit us to go away into the herd of swine. And he said to them, Go. So when they had come out, they went into the herd of swine, and suddenly the whole herd of swine ran violently down the steep place into the sea and perished in the water. Then those who kept them fled. And they went away into the city and told everything, including what had happened to the demon-possessed men. 
And behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus. And when they saw him, they begged him to depart from their region. Matthew chapter 8, verses 23 through 34. It is a good day to read the Bible. It is a good day to understand the words of Jesus Christ, to realize what Jesus said and how he said it and why he said it. Well, we go into the, the gospel set up for the Jews, Matthew. Matthew's an amazing gospel. And as we look at the words of Jesus Christ, I pray today God would help us understand those words and realize what they mean and what Jesus Christ is saying. Now, oftentimes I've wondered this. When reading this story, I've wondered what it would be like to be on a boat with Jesus Christ and have trouble and have a storm. I mean, what would you think? I mean, you've got a storm and it's taken over the boat and you think, man, it's, it's gonna, we're going to drown. Or are we going to drown? Because God is with us. I mean, it's a, a real conflict and a real interesting story. And so let's take a look at the overview and consider this. Strong proclamation. That's what I call this. A strong proclamation. And our reading assignment is Matthew chapter 8, 14 to 34, and Mark chapter 4 and 5. But our focus is going to be on Matthew chapter 8, and we're going to take a look at verses 23 to 34. Now, I mentioned to you that this particular passage is about the boat that, were, that they were in and then getting off the boat onto the land where the men came out to see them who were possessed with demonic forces. Fascinating stuff. Very interesting as we watch Jesus encounter this culture that otherwise would not hear him. And so we come to the scripture and it's chapter 8, verses 23 to 25. We learn then, now when he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. And suddenly there was a great tempest that arose on the sea. So the boat was covered with waves, but he was asleep. Jesus Christ asleep in the boat? And then his disciples came to him. They awoke his sleep uh, saying, Lord, save us. We're perishing. So the fear, of, the fear of the storm got to these guys in such a way that they could not let Jesus sleep. Jesus was uh, incredibly tired. After all the ministry that had gone on, he was just devastated. And he was just going to sleep for a little bit and get up and they'll be on the other side. Everything will be great. But he couldn't even sleep because they were moving on him. Lord, save us, save us. The storm is going to do us in. And Jesus does something. But before he does that, there was a panic. How many of us panic when a storm overtook the boat? They did not know who was with them. They did not understand that Jesus Christ would not drown. I mean, Jesus Christ would walk on the water for crying out loud. I mean, think about it. Jesus Christ is not going to drown. And so they didn't understand it. Now let's go on because the scripture says this. He said to them, why are you fearful, O you of little faith? And then he arose and he rebuked the wind. He rebuked the sea and there was a great calm. And so the men marveled saying, who is this that can be that, that, that even the winds and the sea obey him? See, that's the point that we're trying to make here. Jesus Christ speaks to the sea. He speaks to the wind that's blowing and casting out all kinds of things. And he says, now wait just a minute here. Settle down out there. And he settles the sea down. He settles everything down. Now that is fascinating. Even the sea, even the winds would listen to the voice of Jesus Christ. That's amazing. That brings me to this point. The panic was solved through the authority of Jesus Christ. And that is the point. In your life, there are many storms. There's all kinds of things. And, and you might say, oh, Lord, help me. I'm going to die. I'm, this is going to happen. It's gonna... Well, bring it to Jesus Christ and let the Lord speak to you and speak to the storm in your life. And the storm will be calmed. The panic will be solved. Fascinating stuff. But wait a minute. When he had come to the other side, 8, 28 to 32, to the country of Gerasenes, uh, there met him two demon-possessed men coming out of the tombs. 
They were exceedingly fierce so that no one could pass that way. No one could pass that way. And suddenly they cried out saying, what have you, what have we to do with you, Jesus, you son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the time? Interesting. They recognized Jesus. Now a good way off from them, there were a herd of swine feeding, pigs. And so he begged them saying, if you cast us out of these men, permit us to go away into the herd of swine. And he said to them, go. And then they had come out. When they had come out, they went into the herd of swine. And suddenly the whole herd of swine, they ran violently down the steep place into the sea and they perished in water. Look at that. That's amazing. He said, there is a, a swine of pigs over here. Cast us into them. Don't cast us out to be free. Cast us into them. And it happens and the pigs become totally distorted and they drown in the, in the sea and they kill themselves. What an amazing picture. There's a lot to do with this picture, but I don't have time for all of it. But the swine perished. The men didn't. The men did not perish. You see, the way of Jesus Christ is that human life is sacred. This is very, very important. You see, human life is the one that is saved by God. Animals follow human life. We need to understand that John says it is human life that, is, that Jesus Christ died for and gave his life for. We need to get our records straight and understand that Jesus Christ loves us. The animals follow us. So think about that today as we study. know that the 12 apostles of Jesus Christ had disciples of their own after Jesus ascended into heaven and that those disciples became foundational members in the church and even wrote letters and books. Take a look. Polycarp was bishop of the church in Smyrna in the early second century AD. An important church within the Roman Empire, Smyrna makes an appearance in the book of Revelation as a persecuted church. According to Irenaeus, who personally knew Polycarp, Polycarp was not only instructed by the apostles and conversed with many who had seen the Lord Jesus, but also was appointed by the apostles as Bishop of Smyrna. Today, we have four contemporary writings involving Polycarp, including an account of Polycarp's execution written by eyewitnesses. This account is called The Martyrdom of Polycarp and has received a lot of attention throughout the ages. It tells of how Christians in Smyrna were being tortured and killed. They were whipped and flogged to death for crowds or tortured publicly and fed to starving animals. Polycarp's death capped off this violence because of its miraculous nature. Polycarp was an old man at the time of his arrest. After refusing to reject his belief in God, the governor of Smyrna is quoted as saying, Take the oath and I will set you free. Curse Christ. To which Polycarp replied, For 86 years I have served him, and he has done me no wrong. How then can I blaspheme my king who saved me? After much threatening, the governor had Polycarp tied up and placed on a pyre to be burned alive. But when the guards set the pyre on fire, eyewitness reports say the fire made a room around him. He wouldn't burn to death. At this, the guard was ordered to kill him with his sword. The sword succeeded. Polycarp was executed and his body was cremated for fear that this strange miracle would cause him to be worshipped. The Christian witnesses of this counted it a silly precaution. Polycarp was not equal to Christ. He honored Christ by believing in his truth to the end. The Quick Study Bible Guide is an amazing print document ready for reading through the Bible in one year. This year, we have made it our goal to read through the Bible chronologically. We include the four points to live by, regular superheroes from the Bible, strength for life, strength in your mind, 
all of the segments that Quick Study Program has and more. The most important information that this Bible guide carries is to introduce you to the premier document, the Bible. To get your copy of the Quick Study Bible Guide, sent every month automatically, for an offering in any amount, send to P.O. Box 456, Orangeville, Ontario, L9W5G2. In the USA, write to P.O. Box 150, Murraysville, Pennsylvania, 15668-0150. You can call us and reserve your copy at 724-733-8336 or 519-940-8338. And remember, you can get a hold of the Bible Commentary at BibleDiscoveryTV.com. Thank you for staying with us and uh, being a part of the program. We're so glad that you are doing that. It's really important for you to understand that this is also reading the Bible through, and that's very exciting. And especially as we get into the New Testament, it's going to be very exciting. You know, when we get into December, we're going to cover Revelation. Yes, we At are. At the end of the year, the last five shows, we're going to cover Revelation. Mm -hmm. That's going to be very interesting. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. Let's talk about tomorrow. On the next program, we are going to be dealing with Matthew 9 and 10. The forgiveness of sin was and is the main problem with lawyers and religious men. Now, what does that mean? That means that lawyers and people who are religious, well, they tend to use the sin, or I should say the offenses that you've done to come against you. Uh, the opponent. And so it's very interesting. We'll talk about this and more on the next program. Right now, we're going to talk to Janice about what you have for Do You Know? Well, our assigned reading today was Matthew 8 and Mark 4. And in both of those Gospels, we read of the account of the disciples getting into the boat with Jesus and a storm whipping up. Now, in Matthew, it's almost identical to Mark, except that Mark gives us a little bit more details um, surrounding where Jesus was actually sleeping in the boat. Matthew only says that Jesus was asleep, but Mark gives us a bigger picture. So, Corey and viewers, do you know where exactly Mark says that Jesus was sleeping in the boat? Okay, so where was Jesus? It says this. Mm -hmm. this is specifically the place where Jesus was speaking, or sleeping rather, mm -hmm. in the boat. Corey? Okay, I always seem to manage to twist this one around, but I'm going to try again. <laughs> I think that uh, the answer is in the back of the boat, the back. All right. C Corey says it's the back of the boat. Well, you're absolutely right, Corey. The bow is the front, stern is the back, and Mark says he was sleeping in the stern. Now, here comes a bonus mark for you and for our viewers. A bonus mark. A bonus mark. I'm, I'm excited about very this. very generous today. I'm excited. So Mark also mentions something else about Jesus sleeping. So there's another feature here. He's not only in the back of the boat, but he says something else about Jesus sleeping. Do you know what that might be? Who says it? Matthew says Mark. it. Or Mark says it. Okay. Same, same place. Mark mm -hmm. gives us additional information on something about Jesus sleeping, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Corey, do you know? He's sleeping soundly. <laughs> I know. Could be. Um, I know. Sleeping. He, he has a pillow. He ah. There you go. There it is. There That's it is. It. Yes, he was sleeping on a pillow. I love the fact that we get those details from Mark. That's chapter four. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he, meaning Jesus, was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Do you, <laughs> do you not care that we're perishing? That's what their mm -hmm. assessment of the whole situation is. That's right. Was. Well, he's They're just going to perish. With a pillow. And uh, th that's a really interesting format. And uh, we talked about it. We discussed it in the teaching today. And it's interesting that when we go through troubled times, we always look for the dark. And we see the dark more than the light. And mm -hmm. it's hard to see the light when you're troubled by something. But I want to encourage you, if you are seeing the dark, 
that you need to understand that Jesus Christ is the light. So you need to, if you're in trouble, if you're in a situation where you didn't expect it coming, believe me, I know, I've been there, I want you to focus on Jesus Christ and say, Lord, I trust you. I believe what you said, and I, I believe you are the light. So do that, won't you? Here's call to prayer. Perhaps one of the stunning and remarkable facts in the story of the men who were possessed with demonic spirits is that Jesus Christ was addressed by demons before the people. When the spirits recognize the Savior before the humans, there is a deep darkness that is exposed. Man has wandered for many years before the arrival of Jesus Christ. Even today, after the death and the resurrection of our Savior, men and women still wrestle with the reality of God. There is great strength for living when we recognize that Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior. With that, we pray, Lord, I recognize you as God. You are the Savior. In our Strength in Your Mind segment, we have a beautiful Bible quote that is yours if you can discover where it is from. In the New King James Version, it says, open the gates that are, open the gates that the righteous nation which keeps the truth may enter in. Righteous nation which keeps the truth? Well, if you think you know where that is, check it out. Go to BibleDiscoveryTV.com, BibleDiscoveryTV.com, and click on Strength in Your Mind and you can go and see all the answers there and check it out or wait for the discovery letter. It's coming your way with all of the answers in it. But did you know something? Jesus Christ is alive. That's right. And most of the time you see Jesus Christ is on some cross, but that's not where he is. He rose from the dead. He rose from that grave on the third day seen by over 500 people. And he said, I came alive so that you can understand you have the way, the truth, and the life with me. Come to me. Learn more about creation science and the Bible. Learn from Bible Discovery TV and college online. For more information, go to BibleDiscoveryTV.com. That's BibleDiscoveryTV.com and click on Bible Courses.